All right. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the 2020 Great Basin National Park Bio Blitz. I know it's not quite the same. We're not in the park physically. Um, due to COVID, we're doing things in a more virtual kind of platform here, but nonetheless, still really excited and so excited to have the National Park uh, just backing this event and keeping uh, our continuing to move forward, even in this uh, crazy times that we're living in. Uh, we're excited to discover what is in your backyard, what is in our backyard. Um, again, we'll have possible collections coming out of the park from park staff, but a lot of the data that we get from this BioBlitz will be coming from you um, through the through way of iNaturalist and other means of internet sharing. And um, yeah, so this year, the BioBlitz is specifically looking for uh, insects in the order Hemiptera. And it's a pretty, you know, big order of insects, but it's maybe not the most popular, and we'll get into that, but uh, a lot of really awesome Hemipterans out there. And I'm heavily biased because I study Hemipterans, but I think you're going to like this BioBlitz. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to have a lot of fun. My name is Cody Holthouse. I'm the little guy up in the corner there. I'll be one of the instructors, and there will be a few others. Amy Springer is a fellow uh, graduate student here at Utah State that uh, studies alongside me, and she will be speaking to you on some of these videos as well, as well as a few others as well that will join us in a, one or two videos here and there. So, yeah, um, let's get into it. So what is this whole BioBlitz thing? What are we doing? Um, essentially, most BioBlitzes are... Uh, kind of an event centralized on the idea or focused on the idea on of finding as many species in a given area. So maybe a city, maybe a, a state or a national park, like been done many a time through the Great Basin National Park. Um, it could be your neighborhood that decides that, hey, we want to know in, you know, this week period, how many people can we get together and how many species can we find as a group? And so really anyone can participate. Um, it could be community members. And usually there's a few scientists or someone who's a specialist in that field of whatever animals or plants or anything that you're looking for. So they can help facilitate, you know, um, accurate identifications. A lot of community members are very well versed in many different species, but it's good. Scientists and community members uh, help each other out in this kind of concerted effort. So that's kind of what a BioBlitz is. It's this event. Uh, it's usually an acute event, and it catalogs a bunch of species in one area. And this is help. Excuse me. This is helpful because um, if we know more about what species are locally available, we know well. Is this species endangered or threatened? Um, is it an invasive species? It's from somewhere else. Um, do we have you know a really important species that we didn't even know was here that you know? might change how we do things when we develop this land or a lot of things that it really informs and public education is a huge part of that i have a photo here of uh, students at utah state university sharing different insect species and identification skills with younger students and that's how we you know share information and this is a great way to get a lot of uh, species information to be able to share on a specific location um, and it's just plain fun um, we, I get to do this kind of as, a, as my job. I go out and identify insects all the time, but I think it's really good that, you know, others that maybe don't do that, you know, a lot of us have very different jobs. I mean, you're not like me and you don't look at insects every day. It's a total blast getting to learn about other insects that are new to you. So yeah, that's what a bio blitz is. And why insects? Why are we looking at hemipterans? Um, insects make up a large majority of the species that are on earth today, you know, as far as the species that we have described and understand, um, this is just one graphic of many that you can find online. Um, and this is a specific set of researchers here at the bottom of the slide that have found this. But insects make up a vast majority of, or proportion of the different types of life on Earth. So, yeah, it's a powerful little graphic there. And, it, you know, it's a great place to say, hey, what are we going to look for in this BioBlitz? Well, according to this pie chart, insects would probably be a good place to start cataloging lots to look at. And just so we're all on the same page here as we get into this video series, insects are those that have, you know, if we're looking at like all animals on earth, 
smaller, hard exoskeleton creatures that have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. That's different than a lot of the arachnids that we're used to, like spiders, who would only have two body segments. And they have three pairs of legs, so that's the total of six. You guys, you remember that. We've learned that, you know, early on. And two antennae are pretty consistent as well. There are many other features, but those are some of the, like, really, like, targeted characters that you'd want to keep in mind. This is a, you know, a wasp here, but we're talking about Hemiptera, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But how do we get into actually identifying species? Um, well, there's a lot of ways of doing that, and species is kind of a big word in and of itself, but for our purposes, we really want to understand like taxonomic naming. And so Carl Linnaeus, you know, back in the day, laid down this hierarchy of saying, how do we classify all living things and organize them and to like compartmentalize them? And so there's domains, there's kingdoms, um, phylum, class, order, family, all the way down. And you guys maybe remember this from, you know, school that you've probably learned this with your teachers in school. I have the example of a fox here, specifically the uh, genus or genus and species Vulpes Vulpes, and um, you can follow it all the way down from what domain this fox is in, all the way to what exact species this fox is. Um, and that this kind of classification is really important, um, and we'll kind of use it as we look at insects, specifically this order of and so just to give you a better idea, a lot of you are familiar with insects, you know, grasshoppers, butterflies, beetles, things like that. And that is a class, insecta. So there are other classes. Um, you know, we have things like arachnids that are in a totally different class. Uh, both arachnids and insects are arthropods, so they are both jointed foot creatures. Um, but then, at the same time, they're also animals, like we are. So if you go far enough up the hierarchy, there's usually a, a kind of a finite point that everything meets back at. And then as you go down towards the bottom of this pyramid, you're seeing things at the most specific level, which is species. And so we're going to kind of talk about order in this BioBlitz, and we want to know how to catalog Hemiptera and what makes them unique. And to do that, you have to really get into the family level identification characteristics. Um, family is a really great category of insects because it helps you get a large number of insects that all share similar features um, physically and also they have similar ecology. And so we'll get into order and family quite intensively and also some genus and species level identification. But yeah, so. Well, you know, what do we see in our homes uh, commonly by order? And this was a study done in North Carolina by some scientists, and they went and surveyed some homes there. And they gave some really cool percentages here of what uh, were the most, like, encountered orders. And things like spiders, beetles, wasps were commonly encountered, as you can see by the graph here. But Hemipterans are on the list. They're not in the limelight. They're only 4% of what they were finding in those homes, but they are around. Hemiptera is a pretty large order. There's an extreme amount of diversity there, and it's a really good order for us to be familiar with. And I think you will find you know more of them than you even thought before this video. Um, so Hemiptera. We talked about insects just before, about how they have this hard exoskeleton, head, thorax, abdomen, the three body segments three pairs of legs, two antennae. Hemiptera share all those characteristics. They are insects. Um, but we do want to start kind of understanding how they are unique. You might be saying to yourself, I don't see these separate body parts or segments. A, B, and C are these color kind of pieces here to this rectangle. And you'll see that the head is here. And then B, where the thorax is, that's that middle body segment. It's kind of flush with the abdomen a little bit, but there is a delineation here. Legs are only ever attached to the thorax. That's a good way to note, too. And the abdomen is that last segment. So it's there. They share that characteristic. Um, but there's a whole just slew of different families, different genus level, different species of hemipterans. And so we're going to try to do our best to kind of unify some of the characteristics that bring them together. And we'll help. And I, I love this slide, I was being silly, but 
the fact of it is, all of our hemipterans suck. They are piercing, sucking, feeding uh, insects, and that is what kind of unites them. There might be a lot of diversity in the way they look, but their feeding habits and this use of a proboscis, fancy word for saying a straw-like mouth part, is kind of what unites them. Um, they use this proboscis to pierce through um, membranes and plant material. Uh, it could be other creatures like you're seeing in this bed bug here. This is a, an assassin bug that's got a really pretty thick proboscis that it used to prey on other insects and it sucks their hemolymph right out of them. Pretty wild stuff. Um, but yeah, sucking, piercing, feeding habits, that is something that unites this order. So keep that in mind as you're out looking around and you're saying, man, I can't tell these apart from beetles, from butterflies, all these other orders. What makes Hemiptera special? It's this ability to pierce and suck. And they've adapted many different ways of doing that. And this is a close-up view of what this stink bug would look like underneath its um, body here. They fold up the straw-like mouth part usually ventrally. And uh, you can see this proboscis is perfect for stabbing into this what looks like a grain crop. And he's putting in his saliva and taking up the nutrients that he needs. Um, an incredible mouth part adaptation. And again, just something to unify this large group. And so what are we going to focus on with these videos and in this bio blitz specifically? It's kind of this idea of Let's wrap our head around Hemiptera by looking at some of the major groups in Hemiptera, which are these three suborders we present to you. Heteroptera, Achenorhynchia, and Sternorhynchia. I'll go over Heteroptera in the next couple videos, and Amy will cover Achenorhynchia and Sternorhynchia and some of the families there. Um, we chose family groups because, again, it's, it's a large enough category to where you get a large amount of insects, but there's a commonality of the way they look, the way they feed, and you can get some commonality there. Family names always usually end in AE. So things like, you know, Pentatomidae or Reduvidae, that AE, you'll know you're looking at a family name when you see that AE. So keep a lookout for that. How these, uh, you want to know how to recognize these family groups by the end of these videos, and possibly a lot of tidbits of facts on their ecology, where they live, eat. Uh, what time of the year they might show up, what kind of plant they might be on. So, yeah, that's the things that we will highlight. Um, and then we want to touch on collection. How do you physically collect insects with traps, nets, things like that? And how do you share photos effectively? iNaturalist is a great platform for that, and we'll have you do that quite a bit in this BioBlitz. And how to collect insects in such a way that you can put them into a shadow box or a Cornell drawer to make uh, forever collection that you get to show people and uh, present all of this stuff that you've collected in the field, these insects you've collected in the field, I should say. So yeah, we're excited for you guys to join us on this BioBlitz. Hopefully this gives you a good introduction. Go read up on Hemiptera and join us next for the suborder Heteroptera. Thanks so much.